USA. So good morning, everyone. This is Michael Darger from the University of Minnesota Extension, and John Bennett is our technologist. I'll be your MC today, and we're excited to have this presentation about uh, what uh, the good work that um, Michelle Landsberg and uh, her people in Thief River Falls are doing uh, in this time of the pandemic. Uh, but before we get started, um, just saying that this is the first or the second in a, a special series of retaining businesses during the pandemic. And we're welcoming people from uh, mostly Minnesotans, but we have a good deal of other Americans here and we have a good international contingent. So uh, in the tradition of the land grant universities created by Abraham Lincoln and Justin Murrell, we are pleased to present this um, webinar for all peoples and welcome to everybody. Uh, we will be recording today's session and hopefully have it out in a week or so, but I'm still working on last week's uh, webinar recording. I'm learning some new skills here uh, at home, so uh, I'm a little bit slower than some of the people I'm used to relying on. I think you all know how that, that goes out there in this, in this new era. Um, we will have another webinar uh, Tuesday, and uh, I know the spacing is kind of odd, but we're just kind of squeezing them in where we can. But we will have a session called Support Main Street this coming Tuesday, same time, same channel. So you can register for that. And Ryan Pesh uh, and a special guest will present Tuesday. And that will be about you know, retail specifically. So uh, we also will, if there's any um, PowerPoints or anything, but I don't think there, there will be. I think Michelle's just going to have a conversation with Ronnie Bhattacharya. And we're going to record it and hope you enjoy it. The chat line is open. You can chat in questions. Um, we do have it set for a uh, meeting format, so, which, so you can see each other, you, you can chat, but we'll, we'll try to have them uh, talk for about 20 minutes, and then we'll save about 10 minutes for Q&A, and I think that's about it. Did I miss anything, John? I think you got it, Michael. All right. Well, again, welcome, everybody, and uh, let's learn together. So now I'll introduce our two uh, presenters, Ronnie Bhattacharya is an extension educator in community economics and John's my colleague and she serves the north and the west part of Minnesota and Ronnie will be interviewing uh, she's located in normal times in an office in um, uh, Crookston right and but she's beaming out from her brand new house there and so uh, and then our special guest presenter is Michelle Landsberg who is the executive director of Advanced Thief River Falls and she's doing some great work there and that's what you're going to learn about today so so Ronnie, take it away. Thank you, Michael, for the introductions and thank you, Michelle, for joining us today. Um, as we get started, Michelle, can you tell us a little bit about um, what Advanced Thief River Falls has been doing to support businesses during this pandemic? Sure, Ronnie, and, and uh, before I get started, I just wanna say uh, thank you to University of Minnesota Extension for all the work that you do. And I think these webinars are just a fantastic um, way to support all of us as we work with businesses and uh, hearing about the upcoming uh, webinar on Tuesday with supporting downtown retail uh, businesses. I, I definitely want to take part in that as well. Um, Advanced Thief River is, uh, is an economic development organization and uh, our four, four focus areas are recruitment, retention, expansion, and attraction of businesses. And right now, all, pretty much all of our attention is on retention. Uh, we, we want to retain our businesses and um, see them get through this pandemic. Um, I, I can't use the word unscathed, but see them come through and uh, have the ability to be healthy uh, and continue to, uh, to grow and, and have business success. So, you know, looking at, you know, uh, what, what we could do within the Thief River Falls area to, uh, support area businesses. Uh, we don't have any loan programs ourselves as an organization, uh, the city does. But um, finance, of course, is one of the big things that um, businesses need, or they needed right off, right off the bat um, as, as they were closing their doors. And um, there's, there was just, as you know, there's, it's just been a flood or a barrage of information um, uh, on the web, on, on TV, through email, um, everywhere. So we wanted to create kind of a, a digital 
platform or infrastructure to kind of channel information to businesses in, in a way that made it easier for them to digest um, and also for us to have dialogue with them and also for them to have dialogue with each other. So um, there were a couple of things that we started on top of our regular, you know, email communication and our, and our website, you know, that, that, those things were already in place and we, we are continuing those. But the two new things we did were to establish a private Facebook group and uh, to start having weekly webinars with, with the business community. So um, we established both of those. Um, our our uh, local chamber of commerce uh, launched uh, a hashtag uh, TRF for Thief River Falls Strong. So TRF Strong. So that's the, what we call our Facebook group, T, the TRF Strong Facebook group. Uh, we, we have set it as a private group. So, you know, any content and members are only visible to people in the group. Uh, we have set eligibility requirements. Uh, so you have to, to be a member, you have to be a business owner, uh, spouse or partner of a business owner, co-owner co or a nonprofit organization, um, or somebody that's providing direct business support services to businesses. Um, why Facebook? Well, it's, it's there, the, the platform is there, it's very easy. Um, to to get this set up so we didn't have to you know pay somebody to build some some platform for us so it's very easy it's there and also um, in our region there's a lot of people on Facebook so people have these accounts and it allowed us to make connections with people um, and businesses in in the area that probably would not have been possible um, in any other way so um, we started that um, with reaching out um, to our own network of contacts and then inviting those businesses to invite others they knew that should be part of the group. So in that fashion, we were able to uh, get in touch with more people. So as we, as we used the group to get information out, we, we were able to uh, expand our reach. Um, you're probably all familiar with, with private Facebook groups, but if someone is suggested for membership, the way we've set it up, we, we have to approve them. So not just anybody can get in. And the reason for that is just, we, we want the businesses to feel assured that uh, any questions or comments that they post on the group are not uh, available for public consumption. It's, it's business to business and it's, um, it gives them that confidence in, in speaking freely. Um, most of the time in our, you know, since our community is not real large, these are probably people we know um, when we see an, someone suggested for membership. Um, but if, if it's not someone we know, um, we rely on their answers to a set of, of questions. So they have to answer three simple questions. Do you own a business or run a nonprofit? What is the name and where is it located? So in that, in that, with those three simple questions, we know um, that it's a business, it's a local business or nonprofit, and it's lo it, um, yeah, and it's it's located in the region. I already said that. So um, so that's one thing we started was was this uh, private Facebook group. Um, in conjunction with that, we also started weekly webinars. So um, we uh, we've had four of them now. Um, and uh, after the webinars, we, we post, we, we record all of them. So we, re, we post the presentations. Um, if there were videos, if there were documents, uh, links to resources that were mentioned on the Facebook group, we post all of those webinar resources on the Facebook group. Um, so it, it, the two work together very, very well. Um, the, the top, in terms of the topics we've covered, um, we, we started, as I mentioned, with financial resources because a lot of businesses immediately uh, were impacted financially and that was the topic we knew that, that there was the most interest in. So the first one, we talked about the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Uh, we were fortunate to have Twyla Kennedy, who is uh, with the SBA Minnesota District Office. She's the lead economic development specialist there. We also had Kari Howe, 
with the Department of Employment and Economic Development talking about um, the state's emergency loan program. <clears throat> For the second one, we had uh, Congressman Colin Peterson, who was on hand to talk about the CARES Act and how that was progressing. Um, and it was great to ha uh, have our, our businesses able to have that dialogue with the congressman, ask questions, um, express their concerns, and so forth. Um, that same webinar, we also had Twyla Kennedy again with the SBA Minnesota District Office uh, presenting specific information about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, in the third week, we had our city administrator present information on the city's new emergency loan program. Uh, this week, we had a couple of marketing professionals uh, that we were able to tap and they provided information on uh, social media and digital marketing during the crisis because we know that's the other piece is you know these businesses have ground down well to a halt some of them um, and you know to have to uh, start uh, the momentum of, of uh, regaining that traction it's, it's better if they can keep some customer engagement so um, we, we felt that was a good topic for them. Uh, we're look, in upcoming sessions, we're looking at um, how to update your information in Google. I mean, it's a simple thing, but you know, um, a lot of people, their hours have changed or how, how are your customers going to access uh, your business now? So that type of information can be updated in Google and, and we want our businesses to understand how to do that. We're also looking at um, how to create what if financial projections. So. What if uh, I only have 30% of my customers coming in and engaging with my business starting in June? What does that look like? Um, what can I do with my variable expenses? Um, is there anything I can do in terms of a new revenue stream and creating multiple financial projections? I do see there's a chat question here. Um, yeah, wondering if the business operators have been pretty open on the Facebook group and if so, what, what do you think about the management of the page has allowed them to converse frankly? Um, I would say it's growing slowly. Um, it, we have some engagement of, of uh, questions being asked. Uh, I would say people are getting a little more confident about that. Uh, we also, um, and this is, uh, well, no, it's not getting into one of the next questions. We've also, uh, have seen some of them engage with private messages. So that maybe they're not willing to put it right on the page. Uh, they may private message me and then we'll have that dialogue that way. Um, sometimes it progresses to a phone call. Uh, other times, uh, if, if I see that that is a question one individual had, then I will also post on the Facebook page. If you are a self-employed person, and you're wondering about getting unemployment insurance, you know, so maybe I had that question privately, but then I'll, I'll post it in a way that it's non-identifiable, but it provides information to the rest of the group. It's a very good question. Um, but we, we do see that happening a little bit, but I think it may, it may grow uh, over time. Thank you, Michelle. Um, what tools did you use to actually identify the needs of the businesses as you first got started with the Facebook group and the webinars? Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, I think, you know, as, as, uh, as I mentioned, the Facebook group itself provides a platform for, pe for people to ask questions. So that does kind of help us to understand what information are they needing. Um, and so that, that provides some sense. We also are watching social media and what others are, are posting maybe in elsewhere. Um, uh, and also what we hear anecdotally. Um, we also, uh, the, our, our local chamber of commerce created a survey instrument uh, early on, uh, right, right when the first stay at home orders came out. And um, that was sent out, each of us sent it out um, and uh, was completed on March 22. And so that survey instrument told us that 85% of businesses uh, do not have the type of work that allows them to work remotely. Uh, most were still open for business at that time, but some of that has changed since um, certainly there, there were modifications um, if they were open. And um, 
they're seeing a large negative impact in their sales revenue and they expect a negative impact over the next six months. So that was one of the things we knew, um, what, it kind of showed us some of the things that we needed to pay attention to. Okay. Um, what state um, regional or local partners have you been connecting with to address some of the community business needs? Well, um, as I've already mentioned, uh, we've connected with the SBA Minnesota District Office. Um, and I, I w I've been amazed at how available um, Twyla Kennedy, the lead economic development specialist was. Um, I, I was just amazed by uh, how available she made herself to our group. Um, the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, uh, both on the loan side and the unemployment side, both of those come into play. Um, the Northwest Minnesota Foundation, uh, which is a, a charitable uh, community foundation, regional uh, in, in our region in Northwest Minnesota. Uh, certainly the city of Thief River Falls, um, our local and state elected officials, the community banks, um, and really, uh, I, I would say my, my strongest partners in terms of day-to-day -day work and what, what we're, we're doing to support businesses are the Thief River Falls Chamber and Visit Thief River Falls. <clears throat> what led you to partner with them and cre like create a united front for the community? Well, um, similar mission. So, so that uh, we have differences, but there are, there are enough similarities that uh, it was kind of a natural fit, but also they both have strong networks in the community uh, and amongst the businesses in the community. So by partnering together, we were able to broaden our reach substantially. Um, so um, that I, I would say those are the main reasons. And it, it's been a very, very good partnership. Great. I'm glad that the partnership is holding. I've been watching it online and Facebook. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, looking to the questions, Mar uh, Michael, did you want to take the questions from chat or did you want me to? Go ahead, Ronnie. Um, uh, there is a question about, has the Facebook page and weekly webinars encouraged peer-to-peer -peer assistance or is this reliance mostly on TRS Strong to help navigate the bureaucracy? I would say so far it's, they haven't, uh, on the, on, in the Facebook group, I haven't seen so much of them doing that. Um, a little bit. Uh, but it, mostly they've been asking for us to answer the questions or, or refer them to the appropriate resource. I hope uh, that's one thing we really want to foster uh, is that dialogue with businesses. But I, I think, you know, we're all getting used to this new, I don't want to call it normal, but this, this way that we are, have to do business right now. Um, we're all getting used to that. So I, I hope we can continue to foster that because that's one thing I would like to see grow. Um, I have actually a question. Um, I noticed too that the city um, decided to modify its revolving loan program to better address the needs of um, area businesses. Is that an idea that came from the collective or was that something that the city decided on its own? Well, actually, um, I will, I will credit my, our, our Thief River Falls Chamber. You know, I'd, I'd been thinking about it for a long time, um, uh, but I, he, he kind of took the bull by the horns and he, he stopped and had a conversation with the mayor and the city administrator. And he said, I think uh, we need to do, we need to do something uh, locally, uh, some type of emergency loan program. And then he and I did talk quite a bit about how to frame that and what, what, what that might look like. Um, and so with encouragement, you know, the city did, did make that uh, decision. They set aside, I, I think, uh, 250,000 of their loan dollars for uh, what they're calling the uh, micro loan emergency loan program. And it, it has very attractive terms uh, for the businesses. So it, and it, and it, I think within the first week, um, my, uh, quite a bit of the, the loan funds were used up and I think they're looking at uh, 
setting aside additional funds for that. Okay, that's great. Um, what platform do you use for webinars? We use the Zoom platform. Um, I've used a, it's, it's a platform that I, you know, I bought a subscription for, so I, I had that. Um, I know there's other platforms. Uh, I have used other platforms, but I have found it to be an easy one for people to, to use. And so um, it's, that, that's what we've used and it, it's worked pretty well. And then um, another person wanted to ask, what advice would you have for people who want to lead similar activities in their community? Hmm. Um, I think, you know, in terms of, in terms of the Facebook group, um, I, I think, I think having it private is important. So making, setting it up as a closed group and, um, initially I set it up as al also not visible. Um, I changed that to making it visible. So the difference there is if you, if you haven't set up one of these groups before, a visible group can be found if you search for it. So if you put in the hashtag, hashtag TRF strong, that Facebook group will come up, but it will say only members can view the posts. And then people can request to become a member um, through that feature. Init initially, I, I didn't have it that set up that way, but I would, I would recommend that you set it up as visible, but, but closed or private. Um, in terms of the, the webinars, um, I would say, you know, um, if you set up the Facebook group first, I think it gives you a platform to ask people what, what they're interested in terms of, of uh, webinars or information. So you can provide them what they're looking for. So I would do the Facebook group first um, and then following closely on that if you wanna do um, uh, webinars with your local group. Um, you can use the Facebook group to provide guidance on the content. Um, there's a question of, um, from your survey or just interactions with businesses, do you have a sense of how long businesses can carry on with cash or financing the businesses have on hand? Well, the survey, the survey uh, businesses said, you know, that they, they thought they'd be negatively impacted for six months, but um, that was, Mid-March, probably, you know, it, it, the survey closed on March 22nd. So that's already a long time ago now. And I, I, I don't, I guess I don't know. I, I'm very concerned, extremely concerned. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how long they can carry on with, with the cash they have on hand. I, I, think, I think there's gonna have to be a lot of creativity and out of the box thinking for, for these businesses. Um, uh, how are they going to do business? They're maybe going to have to do business, well, obviously differently, but what does that look like? Um, and uh, the, the, not only the continued customer engagement, but the, trans the, transactional, uh, the transactional format, how are they going to continue having transactions with customers? Um, some of them have, uh, you know, websites where they can sell online, but many, 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 the majority do not. They may have a website, but they're not, they're not selling online. So they don't have that as, a, as an immediate avenue. I'll jump in there. Uh, this is Michael and Eric Canada uh, out of the, he has the synchronous uh, business retention survey product that many of you know about, but he's leading a national coalition. It's actually international and they have a dashboard and I'll find the link and put it in the chat. Um, and I've, I've created some uh, business retention thought pieces here with my colleagues, uh, but their, their national dashboard with over 3000 businesses having responded to, to surveys are indicating around 12 to 13 weeks, that's about a week ago, of ability to survive. Now that's the average. The smaller the firms are, tends to be the lower the number that they can survive. And that's just be able to survive as of the conditions, as of the day they answered the survey. So it's an evolving thing, which I think you're kind of alluding to, Michelle. Yeah. And your survey, I think you said, was on March 22nd, which is a month ago. So Canada's group, they're encouraging people to do rounds of surveys so they can kind of measure. And the, of course, the Minneapolis yeah, Fed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you want to mute everybody? 
So anyways, uh, I'll post those to the chat. And so, uh, yeah, it's uh, the good news in, Min in Min Minnesota t in today's Minneapolis paper is that uh, 100,000 people might go to back to work uh, in the next week with 20,000 businesses. But uh, in every state and country, it's kind of different. So I'll, I'll put those things in the chat. Back to you, Ronnie. Thank you, Michael. Um, there is a question about how TRF has structured their new, their new program for emergency loans. Um, and I do believe that EDAM has, will be having a webinar on how revolving loan funds can restructure themselves. But um, did, um, does TRF have a concern that providing a loan to a struggling business may turn into a grant if they aren't able to prove some sort of repayability? Yeah, that's always, that's always a danger. Um, uh, one of the things that, that the state has is uh, through the Department of Employment and Economic Development is a loan guarantee program. And I, I believe the city is applying for that loan guarantee program, which would uh, guarantee 80% of the loan. Um, so that, that would be a help in mitigating some of the risk because yes, these are high risk loans. Um, and that's one of the reasons I kind of waffled a little bit on setting them up. It's a little bit of a band-aid um, for, for the businesses because it's not going to, you know, make them successful, but it's kind of a bridge, hopefully, that can help, help them. But it, it, it is difficult to know what is the best thing to do in terms of, of economic development. Are, are, we, are we helping in, in giving them these loans or are we not? But I think, I think the, the feeling definitely was that that we needed to do that and, and it would be a help and yes we know there is risk but um if if you have the ability to get a loan guarantee through through state government that does that does help quite a bit thank you um, in, in, in terms of the of the of how it was structured um, the loans are up to ten thousand dollars two percent interest uh, they have to be paid back uh, over three years and the first payment is deferred for six months Great. Um, are there groups or institutional entities that are not involved or active that you wish would be? Um, I guess uh, I don't, none that I'm aware of right now, I guess. I think, I think we're, we're able to uh, get, get the right people involved. People have been very willing to step up and get involved. Great. Um, are there any communications to the community about supporting local businesses through the pandemic? Yes, there have been a lot. There have been a, there have been a, there have been a lot of communications uh, put out on our websites and and through social media. I, we we do believe that's very important, and I, I think the community understands that. Um, one thing I was going to mention um, back, in, you know, with the question about how long can these businesses survive. Um, that's one of the reasons I'd like to do uh, for one of our next webinars uh, the, the a presentation of how to do a what if scenario so the businesses understand themselves you know what that gap might be um, and, and how to position themselves best to get through um, with with the with with various parameters so I think that is useful information for businesses. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all that we have for questions right now. So I want to say thank okay. you, Michelle. Yeah. Um, well, thanks, Ronnie and Michelle, for uh, having this conversation. We are recording it, and we'll send it out um, as soon as we can. But uh, a few things that I learned from this session is the use of Facebook, in particular private Facebooks, and kind of moderating that, having, uh, since it's a private group, uh, gives you a chance to uh, ensure that the right people are in the group and then encouraging discussion and private messaging, but also there's webinars and having weekly webinars. It seems like overall, Michelle, that you took a very strong communications approach and you are taking a communications approach to stay uh, informed and to encourage people in this time because this really is a time of retaining businesses and retaining our economic, uh, you know, the things that drive our economies while we stay safe. So thank you very much. And everyone, again, next Tuesday, uh, I put a link in the chat for anyone of you can give us some evaluation uh, comments. We have an evaluation survey. I also put that link to that dashboard in the chat, which is the, um, the surveying that people across most of the United States have been doing. And I'll 
try to look for better links that are more brief links um, that we'll post to our uh, extension web pages um, so that uh, we can we can keep you all informed and and you keep us informed too. We are looking for more topics. So if you, uh, in the evaluation form, you can give us your thoughts about which topics you'd like to see in this webinar series. Uh, and also, uh, or you could just contact myself, John, Ronnie, you know, someone else on the extension team. Um, and everyone um, stay safe and uh, stay in touch. Mm -hmm.